Hello guys, so I have 3D printed a little mechanism to try and get control of our bucket here. So basically it's a what's called a scotch yoke mechanism. So you can see this slot on this connecting rod here. I can slide like that. And then we have this crank that is going to connect to our N20 motor. And as that rotates, it's supposed to pull the, uh, the arm back and forward. So probably a good bit of friction in this, not the ideal um, sort of mechanism, but just thought we'd give it a go and see what it was like. We're using this uh, motor here, and I think we found before when we were doing the uh, RC bulldozer, the these motors are, are not the best really. They are just a little bit uh, a little bit underpowered. These are the ones that have the a worm gear on the output of the N20 motor. I thought we were going to be good, but uh, it turned out to be a little bit too weak, really. So that mechanism was intended to go in there. And I'll try and hold this in place. So we're at one volt at the minute here. We're up to four volts, and it's basically doing nothing. Put it up so there's 10 volts before that motor starts to do anything. So, realistically, that is not a viable option, really. The motor has just not got the power that we need. And I would imagine it's mostly down to the gearing. So our mechanism is jammed now it looks like. Oh. Okay, what happened there was the the D shaft went up too far. Let me just try that again and just show you. It's sort of half working, but we're already at 10 volts, so it's not. You know, it's, it's taking 10 volts to do that, so it's, it's not ideal, really. Like, we need a motor with more power that we can control from a much lower voltage. We were at about six volts before that even done anything. So just to give you an example, uh, this is a very low gear ratio motor. This is one that I had been using on the uh, PC400 for a screw mechanism. So it has a lot more power than the other motor would have. So I'll put the voltage back down because this one will almost immediately react to this. So just hook it up to the power supply. This is probably not going to go very well for us. This, uh, I think, this is old um, a communication wire from maybe an RS two thirty three cable or something like that. It's pretty, pretty solid. Doesn't really want to bend too much. Just see how this one works. So 
that's two volts so when you have the right gearing on the motor it works perfectly this is probably even uh, too high of a gear because it's working so quickly at two volts but you can see that this motor is having no problem spinning the once you get the right position so you need to get the motor in the right position but you can see it doesn't have any trouble really pushing the or moving the mechanism but you really need that gear and so that's uh, that's two volts there we will probably be at twice that uh, with our battery and you could see that was moving quite quick so no real need for it to move that fast so what would be better would be for this to be uh, an even uh, lower speed output so you want uh, a more of a gear reduction so that you can get more torque out of it that way when you're doing the three volts this is spinning uh, this output shaft is spinning slower which means the bucket is moving slower but then you also have an increase in torque so yeah, you'd have a little bit more power from your mechanism uh, all, obviously this won't really work for us because it will be sticking out the bottom of the boom that's not what we want that's why we wanted to try this uh, motor it's because it was going to be nicely in the center of the arm the output shaft is in the center so everything there is perfect what we might be able to do is get one of uh, these type of motors that I could do the same job but uh, I'd need a one with a longer output shaft because at the minute that uh, this one here would hit on the, on the actual motor casing so I can line that up there yeah so hopefully you can see that the the crank uh, wheel is hitting the motor casing there so that won't work for us really but you can get ones of these uh, to have a longer output shaft and there might be enough room well actually we can move it back we can move the motor back to here maybe and you'd have a little bit more room on the end for the whole mechanisms that would have to be right a bit there to work properly so it's not ideal ideally if we could get something like this but with the torque of these other ones that's what we want but for now, that's all we have to work with. There is also this other design here, to maybe an option. If you took off this uh, this bearing here, you could maybe fashion a wheel that would fit over this sprocket. So that maybe that part would be like there. And then possibly you would be able to fit that in the side of the uh, model, something along those lines it's very very tight for space it's probably unlikely that we get that one to work but again it could be worth just experimenting with just to see how how well a design like that would work so this uh, scotch yoke mechanism seems to be okay for moving the, the bucket but our ideal shape of a motor just doesn't have the torque that we need to really drive it so Maybe a little bit more research to be done in N20 motors. Maybe there's a better option out there. But at the minute, this is probably our best one. I'll, I'll probably do this experiment. It's only a matter of uh, 3D printing a gear uh, and seeing how it works on this. And then trying to fit it down the side of the boom here. Because it would be useful to see, have we some way of doing that? Because this is quite, that's uh, quite a reduction in gears there before it goes to that worm gear on the output shaft. So that would have the same torque probably as as this one before it even reaches the worm gear. So I'd imagine this is a very powerful motor. But it's uh, the issue is getting that power into a uh, motion that we can actually use. So we need a, a crank or something on one of these gears to do that. So that was just a little 3D print that I had done today. I just wanted to see how that worked. So it hasn't just perfectly solved our problem, but we're kind of on the right lines, I think. And uh, this is what I meant as well about this can go to full 360 degrees in this mechanism without 
the motor hitting a hard stop or anything so you don't have to worry about limits because there there is no limit once it gets to this point it's uh, it's just freely able to move on to lowering the bucket again so if we could get a, a nicely geared motor with plenty of torque I think this mechanism would be ideal for this particular model anyway. So that's what I'm trying to do. I hope you've liked this so far. And uh, yep, thanks very much for watching.